Welcome back to another episode of Out Loud Geek, where we discuss news and views about pop culture, science fiction, fantasy, food, cooking, the outdoors, and more. It's time, once again, for another depressing dose of Dismal Disney. I want to begin this video with the following question. What is business acumen? If you haven't heard that particular term before, you may have heard of the term business sense, which is sometimes used in place of business acumen, but what exactly is it? According to the website acumenlearning.com, business acumen is keen, fundamental, street-smart insight into how a business operates, how it makes money, and how it sustains profitable growth now and in the future. And there is tons of information online about business acumen, which, as far as I can see, the Walt Disney Company severely lacks. But before proceeding, I'd like to ask everyone to please like this video, please subscribe to this channel, and please press the bell to receive notifications. Thanks! Three different concepts or pillars come together in order to have business acumen, knowledge, skills, and abilities. And one of the key components under knowledge is financial literacy, which is the cognitive understanding of financial components and skills such as budgeting, investing, borrowing, taxation, and financial management. The absence of such skills is referred to as being financially illiterate. So how would you describe the state of Disney's financial literacy with the production of movies that flopped such as The Marvels, Indiana Jones and the Dildo of Destruction, The Little Mermaid, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, Strange World, Wish, and Eternals? In 2023, Disney only had one successful blockbuster movie, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. All of the other very expensive blockbuster movies that Disney released last year flopped, and over the past several years, the number of flops that the company has been producing has been increasing. Does that make Disney sound financially literate or financially illiterate? So I don't know about you, but I would have to lean on the side that Disney is financially illiterate. Now, under the skills portion of business acumen is stakeholder awareness. And who are a company's stakeholders? While there may be some internal ones, the most important ones are all external and include shareholders, customers, communities, governments, and trade associations. But of those, the most important two are the shareholders and the customers, because if there aren't enough customers, a business could go broke and as its income drops, shareholders may become disillusioned as they start to sell off shares of stock, which makes it drop in value. Thus, it's incredibly important for a company to have a comprehensive approach to effective stakeholder engagement, which includes ongoing communication, listening, and collaboration with the stakeholders. In other words, a company needs to understand what its stakeholders, mainly its customers and shareholders, want. And is the Walt Disney Company doing that? Does Bob Iger and Disney's existing board of directors actually listen to the needs and wants of its shareholders and customers? I would have to say no, based on its slate of mostly flopping big-budget movies such as the ones that I mentioned earlier, as well as its expensive slate of mostly lackluster and rejected shows that it has produced for its Disney Plus streaming service. And let's not forget the failed Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel that not only had a very generic sci-fi look, it was also incredibly overpriced so that hardly anyone could actually afford to experience it. Did Disney actively engage Star Wars fans about the Galactic Star Cruiser to determine what the customers would actually want to see beforehand? No, of course not. Nor did they actively engage customers about what they'd want to see at the Galaxy's Edge lands in Disney parks. Disney decided, and fans are disappointed, because Disney has become far more interested in pushing what it thinks its customers want instead of taking customers' wants seriously. Did Star Wars fans want a Han Solo movie? No, but Lucasfilm produced one anyway. Did fans want a Boba Fett movie? Yes, then Lucasfilm stopped producing one and instead produced a poorly written streaming show for Disney+. 
Did Star Wars fans want an Obi-Wan Kenobi show that focused on a young Princess Leia and a female Inquisitor named Reva chasing after her? No, they never did, but the woke identity politics activists working within Disney decided that's what Star Wars fans were going to get to push their messaging, and for the most part, fans rejected the show. Fans are also now rejecting the upcoming Star Wars series, The Acolyte, that was created and produced by Harvey Weinstein's former personal assistant, Leslie Headland, who hasn't hidden the fact that she specifically created the show's main character around a non-binary LGBTQ activist actress named Amanda Stenberg. At no point has Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy wanted to provide what fans want to see with Star Wars, and she's instead gone out of her way to do the exact opposite in order to push her radical feminist ideology. Under Disney, Lucasfilm has become a mouthpiece for radical feminism and woke identity politics, and something similar has also occurred at Marvel Studios, because on the same day that Bob Iger and the existing board of directors won their shareholder proxy fight against Nelson Peltz of Treon Partners, as Iger was telling investors that Disney doesn't push an agenda, Marvel Studios formally announced that the new Silver Surfer character for their upcoming Fantastic Four movie would be gender-swapped to be a woman. Do Marvel fans want the Silver Surfer character to be gender-swapped? Hell no! But Disney, which continues to demonstrate that pushing woke identity politics is far more important to them than giving their customers what they actually want, has proven that customer and shareholder engagement is the last thing that they actually want to do. In other words, Disney has not only toppled over the pillar of knowledge for business acumen, it has also done the same with skills. And would you be surprised when I tell you that Disney has also toppled over the third pillar, abilities, as well? One of the primary abilities for business acumen is being able to link cause and effect. Has Disney linked the fact that pushing woke identity politics into their content is driving their customer base away and causing them to lose money? Apparently not. And as far as I have observed, Disney doesn't care because the goals of a socio-political ideology like woke identity politics has nothing to do with basic business acumen. If anything, woke identity politics activists have only demonstrated their total disdain for business acumen because so much of it is counter to their ideology. Because woke identity politics activists, first and foremost, want to pander to specific demographic groups that they have deemed to be marginalized at the expense of those that they have deemed to be oppressors. For a business to do well, unless it's a very small business intended to appeal to a very specific demographic, a business has to appeal to the broadest number of people possible across multiple demographics. And for a large company like Disney, that's the only way that it can be profitable. Who then is Marvel Studios trying to appease by gender-swapping Silver Surfer? Certainly not longtime Marvel and Fantastic Four fans, you know, the customers who would otherwise want to pay to see the movie in a theater. The fans want to see a male Silver Surfer as he has typically been depicted throughout the comics and in past movies. Gender swapping the character serves no business purpose. It only serves the goals of woke identity politics activists who are only interested in pushing their ideological message. What I have presented here in this video in regards to business acumen are some of the reasons why the saying, go woke, go broke, is true. I have personally never given a Fantastic Four movie much hope of being financially successful or being embraced by Marvel fans, but gender swapping Silver Surfer into a woman is most definitely going to have a very detrimental impact on the movie's box office when it premieres in theaters, which is currently scheduled to occur on July 25th, 2025. So since Disney and Marvel Studios clearly want more MCU movies to go the same way as the Marvels did late last year, all I can say is that I hope that Disney shareholders enjoy losing more money. Thanks for watching today, and a huge thanks to everyone who has subscribed to our channel. We appreciate your support. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button, and please feel free to share a comment. If you'd like to help support this channel, please press the red subscribe button, and please press the bell to receive notifications for new content. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Threads, and Twitter by clicking on the links in the description. Until next time, this is Outloud Geek.